Chapter 21 also uh, mentions conservation of charge. It turns out that charge is a very fundamental property. Okay. And just like uh, energy is conserved, just like mass is generally conserved, we have conservation of charge. Uh, so this is a fundamental sort of thing uh, uh, that we run into. Uh, now, how does this apply? Well, that means that, that you don't create this charge. You know, if you get a positive charge, you get a negative charge. You know, there, there's equal amounts of charge in the universe, plus and minus. That's why these things all tend to cancel out. Uh, uh, one interesting thing that happens is subatomic uh, uh, level, a neutron can actually decay into a proton. Now, the problem is neutrons have charge of zero and protons have charge of fundamental charge. Now, you have to, it turns out that, that you have to, can't just turn a neutron into a proton because now you have charge of zero on the left hand side of the equation and charge of E on the right hand side of the equation. So that means there has to be another particle, a particle that has charge minus E. Okay, well, uh, uh, you can't just create something out of nothing. Well, it turns out Einstein tells us E equals mc squared. Okay, so turns out the neutrons have more mass than protons. So uh, that when they go into something with less mass, then some of that mass becomes energy that can then make other particles. And it turns out it's just enough energy to make an electron. And that's nice because electrons have charge negative E. And so now the left hand side of the equation has zero charge. The right hand side of the equation also has zero charge. And so uh, what happens is that neutrons will decay into a proton and an electron. In fact, this is a type of radioactive decay that happens in, in certain kinds of atoms. And so the nucleus of the atom might have too many neutrons. And what happens is it spat, spits out an electron. Uh, now, really what's happening is neutrons and protons are interchanging each other inside here all the time. Uh, uh, you know, you don't have a set, you don't have, I mean, a particle in the nucleus of an atom it, you know, you might have a carbon. It has six protons. It has six neutrons. Well, it turns out that if you pick, if you just watch one of those protons for a while, it's going to eventually be a neutron. One of the neutrons eventually going to be a proton. You know, these things are actually interchanging back and forth between there, and 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 uh, they're doing it by means of quarks. Each one of these is actually made up of of three smaller particles called quarks, and they're bouncing back and forth with each other. Um, so so that happens all the time. Okay, what occasionally happens though is that um, with, um, with uh, like a carbon that has too many neutrons. So your normal carbon has atomic weight 12, so it's got six protons and six neutrons. You can have carbon that's atomic weight 14. That's going to still have six protons, otherwise it's not carbon but it has eight neutrons. That's too many neutrons, and this ch interchange between them can sometimes get screwed up, and it doesn't work right, and so one of these neutrons then become ends up being a proton, and the electron goes spewing out at high energy. Okay, and so now what you have is the carbon uh, now it has seven protons and seven neutrons in there, and so in that case, it was carbon-14, now becomes something that has, uh, 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 it's still weight-14, but it has seven neutrons, uh, seven protons. Something with seven protons is nitrogen, okay? So your carbon-14 now is now turned into nitrogen-14, and that extra electron goes spewing out. If it goes out with high, high enough energy, we call that a beta particle. Okay, so in, in radioactive decay, you can have a high energy electron going out that's a beta particle. You can have a complicated thing go, coming out that's positively charged. So it has charge of 2E, okay, uh, positive 2E, and it's got a weight of 4. So it's basically 
two, two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so this is like a helium nucleus, and that's an alpha particle. Okay, and then we can also gamma particles. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, uh, gamma rays, you know, uh, again, there's an interesting thing that happens here. Uh, e equals mc squared. Okay, you can have an electron and a positron. Okay, so one's positive, uh, one's negative, and, and they're attracted to each other. Uh, a, po a positron's an anti-electron, so they touch each other. They annihilate and produce energy in the form of gamma rays. Well, it turns out if you have enough energy concentrated into a small enough area, you can make a particle and an antiparticle, an electron and a positron, or if you have even more energy crammed in here, you can make a proton and an antiproton. Okay, and so uh, you have to make a pair of them in order for the charges to work out right. Okay, so... That's, that's uh, conservation of charge.